And welcome back. Democratic Party legislator Albert Ho has been fined $10,000 by his own party. This after Ho was caught browsing photos of scantily clad models on his tablet computer during last week's budget speech at the Legislative Council. Pictures of Ho looking at photos of the female models were all over the internet and the lawmaker made a public apology afterward. The Democratic Party's disciplinary committee unanimously decided that Ho had failed to properly execute his duty as a legislator and his behavior had damaged the reputation of the party. The committee ordered Ho to make a $1,000 donation to a charity or a nonprofit organization involved in women's rights advocacy. He will also be openly reproached by the party. Ho once again apologized to the public and his fellow party members and promised not to repeat his mistake. A committee of the Communications Authority has proposed tightening the rules for commentary programs on TV and radio. As Rachel Lung reports, the aim is to ensure fairness and impartiality. The Communications Authority received more than 40,000 complaints about ATV Focus. The news commentary program has been accused of being biased against critics of national education when the controversy took center stage in 2012. And Stephen Chan of Commercial Radio, now its chief advisor, hosted phone-in shows while he served as the station's CEO. Some suggest these programs may contain the views of the broadcasters themselves and be one-sided. The Broadcast Codes of Practice Committee of the Communications Authority has now proposed tightening the rules regarding these shows. For programs hosted by board members, shareholders and top officials of the broadcaster, the nature of the shows must be stated clearly before they are aired. In an effort to avoid unfairness, the committee recommended that the licensees should provide the same amount of airtime for opposing groups to state their views. The reason why we stress the same platform is because in recent months, one licensee has been using its website by picking, uh, selecting certain answers, certain responses from the website to con and consider them as responses. And the committee just feels that it is not fair. The committee will submit its recommendations to the Communications Authority next month. But the authority will have the final say on whether to accept the proposals. Rachel Ling, TVB News. Debate continues to rage on Hong Kong's capacity to cope with a rising number of tourists. And as Joao De Silva reports, the retail sector has voiced opposition to recent protests targeting mainland visitors. Speaking before he left for Beijing this morning, Chief Executive Leung Chunying said Hong Kong would do its best to address the influx of visitors. He also pointed out that the local economy is doing well at the moment and that people should not do things that undermine its development or damage Hong Kong's international image. The comments come after a spate of protests in recent weeks demanding that the government limit the number of mainland tourists. In a sign that such an option could be becoming acceptable in central government circles, Communist Party newspaper The People's Daily recently published an opinion piece saying that like Taiwan, Hong Kong should consider putting a cap on the number of mainland visitors. But the retail sector today spoke out against possible curbs. The department stores and commercial staff union surveyed 400 of its members and found out that 60 percent of them opposed the recent protests. About 20 percent said the demonstrations had had a very negative impact on their businesses. And the Hong Kong Retail Management Association says the city has failed to prepare for a surge in the number of visitors. But it's against limiting the number of mainland holidaymakers. I think we go back to where Hong Kong DNAs are. We are free port. We are part of China. We respect you know, our freedom. Freedom to speak, freedom to travel, freedom to enter and freedom to leave. We shouldn't discourage people come to Hong Kong because Hong Kong is a free port. We cannot say, I want these people come, I don't want these people come. Mark admits, however, that until Hong Kong's capacity to welcome tourists is improved, the individual visit scheme for mainland visitors should not be expanded. Silva, TVB News.
And finally, members of the Antiquities Advisory Board have proposed to list the Chief Executive's Fanling Retreat as a Grade 1 historical building. They also want the clubhouse of the Fanling Golf Course to be listed as a Grade 2 historical building. More details from Stephanie Choi. The decision to propose a Grade 2 listing for the clubhouse of Fanling Golf Course, built in 1914, was unanimous among members of the Antiquities Advisory Board, or the AAB. This means efforts should be made to selectively preserve it. The board's chairman says even if the proposed listings are approved, this won't affect the possible future redevelopment of these plots of land. Under the grading system, because the grading system is purely administrative, it couldn't put a stop uh, the owner. Uh, to demolish the building. Of course, the mo uh, before the owner demolished the building, uh, the alarm system, as uh, is so-called, uh, will kind of enable uh, the administration to kind of develop a, a dialogue. Under the current system, the, the chance of preserving grade two or grade three or even grade one building without the consent of owner is extremely difficult. The AAB will also propose to list the government-owned Fanling Lodge, a retreat for governors during the colonial years and now for the chief executive, as a Grade 1 historic building. Built in 1934, the entire compound includes the main residence, the garden, the stable and the garage. The AAB also proposed to list both the passenger and the vehicular piers of the Kowloon City Ferry Piers as Grade 2 historical buildings. Stephanie Choi, TVB News. And that is a wrap of our news. Good night. Good evening. The weather was cool with a few light rain patches. And as tonight's situation chart shows, the northeast monsoon is affecting the South China coastal areas. Today's temperatures range from 15.4 to 18.2 degrees. And the relative humidity was between 87 to 96 percent, moderate to fresh easterly winds. The current temperature is now 17.5 degrees Celsius, with the relative humidity standing at 93 percent. A trace of rainfall has been recorded since midnight. So, Freddie, how's the weather tomorrow? It will be cloudy with mist and a few rain patches. Temperatures will range between 15 and 17 degrees tomorrow. It will be cloudy, cool and windy in the next couple of days. Tomorrow's air quality health index is forecast at low to moderate. And the maximum UV index forecast for tomorrow will be about 2. And here's the latest global weather update. Cloudy in Shanghai and Xiamen. Cloudy in Guangzhou and Chengdu. Sunny in Beijing, cloudy in Seoul, rain in Tokyo. Bright in Bangkok, sunny in Ho Chi Minh City, bright in Manila. Cloudy in Kuala Lumpur, sunny in Singapore, showers in Jakarta. Thunderstorms in New Delhi, sunny in Karachi and Mumbai. Sunny in Cairo. Showers in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and Auckland. Snow in Toronto. Right in Vancouver, rain in San Francisco. Sunny in London, cloudy in Paris and Frankfurt. And that's the weather. Have a lovely evening.